Good morning and welcome to Soul Call Sunday. My name is Lisa Ferrero. I'm the founder and spiritual director of Soul Call Global. And wherever you are this morning, we welcome you as uh, it's not spring for sure, but the anticipation of it, I'm feeling like, ah, can you just feel it all around? The snow has melted here in the Midwest. Not sure about wherever you are, but it's just like itching to burst forth with something new, something new. And just as nature listens deeply throughout the stillness of winter, Throughout the month of March, we're going to be ex exploring the idea of deep listening as we move into a theme of mind, matter, meditation. And today's theme we're going to look at is who said that? Listening deeply. So stick around for that. But first, as you know, if you've joined us before, we like to begin by deep listening in a particular way, listening for the light directing our consciousness to participate with the light that is within us and around us, the intelligence of ourselves through the practice of Qigong. And Soul Call Global is so blessed to have two masters with us and we rotate them. And um, not like this at once, but we get to take turns hearing from two fantastic voices of two powerful women, really grateful to have in the Soul Call Global mix. And this morning, I believe it is a, a Qigong practice with Sifu Helen Yi. So if you have the opportunity to, to stand and participate with the energy around you, bringing in more light, more of that high, I call it pingy. I don't think it's a word yet, but it will be if I say it enough. Uh, that energy that helps us to feel like that spring that's just about to burst. Our cells mimic nature. It's that biomimicry we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. So enjoy this opportunity to explore Pulling in the Light with Helen Yee. Well, obviously, the infinite has a sense of humor, which I count on and appreciate. Talk about inner listening. If you weren't able to hear that audio, that was because it was our first soiree into or foray into a practice of inner listening. If you couldn't hear that, we've got some. I'm just kidding. Um, we apologize for the the uh, audio, not not uh, not being right there. Not not quite sure what happened, but um, welcome back. And so. Let's just take this opportunity then to listen within and just taking a deep breath in, inhaling light and allowing it to fill your lungs. And as you exhale, allowing yourself to release anything that is unlike love and joy from your week. And again, inhaling light and allowing it to distribute itself evenly throughout all the parts of your body as you inhale. Picture it like bringing light right in through the door of your consciousness 
and filling the space that is your body cavity with brilliant, beautiful white light. And now with your consciousness, hold that light in all the cells of your being, all the trillions of cells, shining, teeming. Can you feel it tingling just beneath the surface of your skin? Energized and alive. And now exhale. Not that you were holding your breath that whole time. Just allow the breath now to flow freely. And with each breath in, allow yourself to expand that light around your body just a little bit, just enough to fill the room you're seated in. Feel that expansion happen. And just following the breath in and out as it wants to breathe the body, just letting it do its thing. But we're focused mostly on the light. And if I suggest that maybe your fingers are tingling with light, or maybe feel the light in your abdomen, feel the tingle there, feel it in your toes, feel it at the top of your head, and now feel it in your heart. And as we open to infinite source and in this expanded nature, know that the only thing that comes in as we're expanded in this beautiful way is love. We say yes to the voice of love, which is the own, the cosmic vibration of all things. And in this sacred space, we open to listening to the sound of the infinite voice, which speaks to each one of us in the language of our hearts individually we get our own direct radio station to the cosmic intelligence of the universe the cosmic love this force which has created everything all from the mind of the infinite beyond the mind of the infinite into matter into the materialized world and just following the breath now putting your attention on the breath remained in that state of expansion and openness with the trust that all beauty, light, and love just comes to you. It flows in you and through you. As you take in the song, May I Hear Your Song by Lisa and Erika. <laughs> Glimpse the divine. May 
May my heart know your word and my tongue sing your name forever and ever and ever I pray. May I hear your song, glimpse the divine. May my heart know your word and my tongue sing your name. Forever and ever, never I pray. Holy, so holy, I surrender to your sacred. the divine May my heart know your word and my tongue sing your name forever and ever and ever I pray May I hear your song Glimpse the divine May my heart know your the divine May my heart know your word and my tongue sing your name forever and ever and ever I pray May I hear your song Glimpse the divine May my heart know your word Tongue sing your name forever and ever. I pray. Hmm. May my heart know your word and my tongue sing your name forever and ever and ever. I pray. You know, it's funny when I think of words like forever and ever. My father used to end some of his words, some of his commands, I would call them when we were children, um, you know, when he really wanted to make a point, he would say, no, and you're not going to do that. And then he would turn to walk away and he'd turn back around and say, ever, like ever is a long time. Well, may I hear your song, Glimpse the Divine. The words to that song, you know, it's an interesting thing to explore as a musician um, and as one who's been able to hear the music of the spheres from the time I was a little girl. It is the language of my heart. It's the way I hear in things that seem to be invisible, which is another concept that is fun to explore. You know, our eyes perceive things that are outside of us and bring them in, but it's also very discerning. Our eyes kind of go out and try to name. They try to help our mind name things. Um, so we take things in through all of our senses, like through the eyes, but we don't need to conjure up images. So what if I suggested that you can see with your ears? That sounds kind of funny, but if just think about it for a second, you realize where I'm going with this. If you enjoy guided imagery uh, through meditation. So for example, if you're not driving, you could close your eyes. And if I say something like, ice cream cone, the sound of those words, because we understand the symbol of language, conjures up an image of an ice cream cone. If I say the word carrot, you can see a carrot. If I also say the word something like, if I say flowers in bloom, sound conjures up images. So we can see with sound with our ears. We can see with our ears. A cool thing to explore, taking it one step further then, is like, who said that? Um, I said, flowers in bloom. We 
each have an idea or a different image probably of flowers in bloom. Some of you will see, I don't know, the flowers that grow in the yard, just the wild flowers. Others will see a specific type, maybe, you know, bougainvillea bushes, or you'd see whatever you see, it might not be exactly what I'm seeing, but we can agree that they're flowers in the category of flowers. Remember that game? Categories, names of flowers, but we're just trying to look at flowers and see them with our ears. Um, ice cream cone was another interesting one. Did you see your favorite flavor from your favorite place? Um, and then what kind? What came after that? Did it lead you into a story about a particular time you had an ice cream cone? You could just say one thing. So the question is always, do we hear the same thing? People will say, we don't hear it exactly the same. I'm not so sure about that, but that's not even the point of the conversation today. I think we hear things according to the vibration that is put forth. We can all hear the word flower. We all hear that word, but it conjures up different images based on the in-between space that I like to refer to as our life experience. That word is going to show up differently in your brain than it's going to show up in mine. Hence, the power of music to help create a particular feeling or vibration in the body. We can use the vibration of music with lyric over the music to get us to kind of closer to the same kind of experience. Like right now, I'm hearing whatever it is that's living in the crawl space again. I'm conjuring up images of what that could be. I can't see it. I could just hear it. And uh, somebody's going to come look at that later and tell me what it is. Um, but I just know it's there. Do you ever just have a hearing sense of something? You have a sense of something inside of you that tells you something is there, but you can't see it. But you just keep going with that belief. So conjuring up images um, is largely due to the experience we have of these things that we think we already know. We already know, but we have some wisdom around. I know what ice cream is. And yes, I pictured my favorite. My favorite one is from a particular place in Pittsburgh where I grew up. And it was one of those skyscraper cones. What was yours? But if we describe what, it, what it's like to eat an ice cream cone, that's a whole different sensation yet. So hearing and being able to see with, with sound is something interesting. And being able to hear through the layers that were built up around what we heard initially and made it mean something. Um, I remember when we were little kids and you know, playing in the backyard, somebody would say, you can't do that. And one of the other kids would say something like, yeah, who said so? Which is the name of the talk today. Who, who said that? Yeah, who said so? And it usually be somebody's mother or somebody, an authority figure said that. So I like to explore that too. It's like the authority figures who say things that just kind of layer over the inner voice of the wisdom of the consciousness we have from the cosmic sound of Om, Pranava, that divine stream of sound, which all sound comes from. Everything we see, everything in the material world that we can see is also sound and vibration. So it's all about sound and inner listening. And I say, you know, um, that song is a little bit about, may I hear your song, Glimpse the Divine? Um, I surrender to a sacred name. I surrender to your sacred ways, the sacred path of living. And sometimes before we surrender, doesn't it take a certain degree of chiseling through some layers of things to get to that place of surrender? Maybe chiseling away at what might have been cast over our hearing to make us hear things in a particular way. You know, when I was little, and still, um, and Kelly and I were talking a little bit about this backstage this morning, I wanna welcome Kelly Lynn Knott. Natalia's uh, taken a, a weekend off. And Kelly, you wanna jump in with me? Hello. Hi, Lisa. You said it so beautifully. We were talking about music and as a musician yourself, being able to just hear it. It, it grounds you and centers you say it in your own words it was so beautiful yeah well what i, I mean we we were 
sound checking and tech checking. And of course, we wandered off into this connection yeah. conversation. And um, I mentioned that I'm trying to bring more music in, into my day. If I touch music, either by listening to it or picking up a guitar or even just singing a cappella, it's, it's like being in a dark room and having the lights turned on and suddenly realizing that there's a picture window that overlooks a, a, a meadow and there's a door that I can open. It's, it's music for me is a connection point so that I can hear um, the messages that are out there for me. You know, it's, it's, it, 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 it just, it turns on all the lights and gives me the opportunity to connect to what is always there that sometimes I lose track of. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming in and, and sharing that piece. Because how many of you out there have the same feeling as if it's music for you, or sometimes you just need a walk out in the, thanks Kelly, a, a walk out in nature. Uh, but that thing that helps you find that center, chiseling through the layers of stuff that got in the way um, during the course of a day or, you know, deadlines that we have to meet or places we need to be or ways we decide to keep ourselves busy. And it, it's the distortion, you know, it's like our own clear channel of consciousness to the infinite is right there and it's just tuning it in. I don't know about you, but every once in a while I get into a situation where I don't know how to proceed exactly. I'm not sure if action is necessary next or non-action. Well, what I've become more proficient at in my experience is putting it on pause and doing some deep listening, just listening inside. All of the information out here is giving me input. I'm not sure what to do with that. And I don't want to be impulsive. I choose to be you know, responsive to something uh, in the highest level of vibration that I know is possible. And what I've learned over the years for me is the highest to operate at that highest level requires a deep level of listening. So I might just put it on pause and see what, what to do next, you know, what to do next or what to not do next. Sometimes the best action is non-action, the book of the Tao. And so when we define things differently by the many voices which have shaped our lives until now, and we decide to take up that chisel of wisdom I was talking about and to begin to create the life which our soul came to experience. That beautiful prayer, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, whose Maha Samadhi uh, anniversary is today. It's a very powerful day for that particular guru if you're in alignment with the voice of, of his wisdom, of the, the way it came through him. The way it comes through you is the one that we're talking about. This is what Soul Call Global was founded upon. Uh, it's not a particular philosophy, it's not a religion. It's a way to experience life through the passion of your soul. What makes you come alive? Uh, each one of us, it's the language, it speaks to us through the language of our hearts. And so hearing that from the center and you know what the word is for one person might not be the word for someone else. And as I like to say, this is not a one word fits all world. It's not a one word fits all world. If it were, how easy it would be for all of us. We just have to hear that word and bam, say the word and I'll be there. Which word? And for whom? About what? Like so many words. Well, when we listen inside, it's an interesting flip because it's not in words. It's more of a knowing, an inner knowing. It's a, a realization that comes from an awareness of all the words at once experiencing life from this center point. I talk about the center point a lot. And if I, I, I think of it like this, I was thinking about it this morning. And I, this is going to be a chapter in, in one of my books. It's like, imagine yourself as a coin of cosmic consciousness, experiencing both sides simultaneously without end. So imagine yourself a coin of cosmic consciousness, experiencing this both and simultaneously without end. And I like to say, you know, which voice are you going to listen to? If you only get one coin, if you're the coin, and this is your incarnation. As a coin of consciousness, I say, be careful which voice you pay attention to. As a coin of consciousness, be careful which voice you, you pay attention to. Where are you going to put that attention? Allow yourself to consider that it's all happening at once and that it's not an either or world. It's a both and world. 
what might be the way you proceed today might be something different tomorrow. It's that act of listening inside, getting our minds to allow, allow it to, you know, shake loose like this cosmic etch-a-sketch we like to talk about, shake loose the ideas that came before that don't serve us anymore and materialize at will those things that we would see most like to see in our world, learning how to listen to the voice within. Some people describe it as the still small voice. Sometimes it sounds like a still small voice. Sometimes it sounds like a roar. If you've ever been in a situation where something inside you just says, get out of here right now, you got to get out of here or do this or don't open that door or whatever it is, stop the car and you don't even know why you're stopping and somebody or something runs in front of the car. It's not always still and small and calm. Sometimes it's like that, but it's knowing the vibration of it more than what it sounds like. It's the degree of intensity with which it comes through in a particular way that you know which voice it is you're listening to. You know, I know there are so many people in my, in my coaching practice. Um, I have a very successful coaching practice. And one of the things I really enjoy most is much, much like a school teacher would say, when you can see the light come on, like Kelly was just saying, it's when you can, when I get to experience watching somebody sift through all of the voices until they get to that one that is their tap root, that truth, that center for their life. Not me telling them what to do. That's not what a coach does. We help to chisel away at all the other conversations, all the things that were built up over the essential truth, that center, that coin that's flipping, that centered one that knows. We just help to uncover it so that you know how to hear yourself, the you of you, that center. So meditation is a really excellent way to begin. And it's one path um, many people resist because it's not a fun one. Our senses aren't always engaged. We've got to pull away from the world of sensory perception and tune all the way in so that we can find that balance point. Uh, and what we bring forth from all that is inside of us is the exciting part of experiencing this planet. We get to be here one time, you know, um, behold, the temple of God is within you. You know, we all hear symbols of, of language and we can conjure up the images of those symbols, but they're slightly different based on our experience, which brings us back to your soul's calling is it's essential that you bring your, your soul forth for us to experience the beauty that comes through you as you. It's like here we are getting ready to be in, immersed in spring and that burst of spring. It's going to look different than it did last time. Even though it's the same trees, the same yard, perhaps. A lot of things are similar. They'll just show up differently after having another opportunity to listen deeply and bring forth those gems, which are the calling of the soul and the heart. So I invite you this week to day by day, take a few moments to just become an active listener, an active listener to the inner guide, which is within each one of us. That's the one voice that own the cosmic sound, thundering waters, we were talking about that last week. But all things came through that sound first and all things vibrate, all things, even if they look like they're hard and fixed, vibrate and they have a tone like we were talking about last week. Each one of us has a particular sound. But listening to that voice within, who said that? And being able to separate the ones that don't belong anymore. Sometimes that's the hardest point. Do you ever get to the point in your life, and it, it happens over and over again, I find in mine, where there are people who just vibrate out of the sphere of what I'm doing now. And um, I've got friends I've had for a long, long time. And most often I maintain friendships with people over, over decades. And sometimes people just, you notice how people just come and go somehow and you just don't even know how that happened. It's because there are different vibratory rates 
and things come together to create. So like attracts like, opposites attract, but like attracts like. And we resonate and vibrate to the fre frequency of the highest evolution of our consciousness. What is mine to do or not do in this moment? Allow yourself to listen and then proceed with knowing that you're being divinely guided in every moment by the voice that is the one that you came preset to, your, your preset call. It doesn't mean we can't change whatever it is we think we want to do. I, I, I've done so many different things in my life, but I come at it with the same vibration of fun. Let's have fun if we're going to do this thing. I have fun with music, and all sorts of different things. But mostly, I have the most fun when I know I'm in divine alignment. So I check, check in with that on a regular basis, even if it's a five minute meditation in the morning, if you can bookend your days, as we were saying with that, you'll know which voice you're hearing. Sometimes it's the voice of, you can't do that, but that wasn't your original voice. It was somebody else's voice layered over. Get rid of those voices is what I'm saying. Get rid of them all as fast as you can. We only get this one. What would you, what do you plan to do with your one wild life? Uh, Mary Oliver, I love that. And uh, the sooner we get to it, the more fun we get to have co-creating with the infinite source of all vibration. So have some fun, have some fun. I think it's it's fun to be around, you know, sometimes people um, age, you know, ever been around people who are aging but have never grown up? When I say they haven't grown up, that means different things to different people too. Just people who still treat other things like children. Like you can't have this. If I can't have it, you can't have it. Not true, that's somebody else's voice. That's not the voice of capital T truth. So get with a program, right? Get with a program of love, of life, of joy, of service to self and others and have more of that inner listening, that contemplative time to, um, Allow yourself to be, reprogram, open up, and bring forth that joy, that vibration, which is you. The world is waiting just for you to be yourself and to sing your note perfectly and raise a vibration for all of us. So enjoy this beautiful song by Natalia Zuckerman.
bowl The one that's sitting on the land Without a reason or a plan Is it still a bowl? Or is it just wood Stuck with nails and holes Does it bend? Does it float? Does it long? For the shape that a wave leaves behind From the moment in time that it's here Before going back to the water It only got caught here Going back to the water You only just caught Beautiful. Thank you, Natalia. And thank all of you for joining us this morning for Soul Call Sunday. We thank you for your donations. Uh, SoulCallGlobal.org slash donate. No amount is too big or too small. And we are asking to uh, help us with our food drive. Our March food drive is March 21st. And some of you are circulating the stimulus. And we appreciate that. Uh, some people have pledged to circulate their stimulus, the bonus they're going to get, and send it to us so that we may get more food to these pockets of families and friends we are seeing in our neighborhoods. You know, if you just walk down your street, every fifth home is experiencing a food insecurity right now. doesn't matter which neighborhood you live in. If you just counted, one out of five homes is having a challenge due to the pandemic. As things are slowly coming back around, we're grateful for that. Um, there's still a lot happening out there. So our March 21st food drive, we have partnered again with and Juice Company in Clintonville as a drop-off location, Monday through Friday. There's more information on the website uh, under events, under Evolve on the website. It'll tell you how to do that and what to do, but all donations we, are, we generously accept and gratefully accept and are recirculating lots of love and goodness. Our, our soul squad is amazing and it keeps growing. If you would like to be part of the soul squad in your area, uh, send us a, a line, drop us a line on the contact page, go to soulcallglobal.org. If you are in need of prayers, please uh, let us pray with you and for you. Uh, we have a great community of conscious global awakened citizens who are here to help. And that would be, drop us a line at soulcallglobal.org slash prayers. It's actually prayers at soulcallglobal.org. And we are with you, sending out the vibrations. Um, most of us meditate and say prayers every morning for all of us. If there's something specific you would like some assistance with, we're so happy to be here with you and for you. We got some really exciting things right after the talk today at 11 o'clock. Uh, if you can go to the, the homepage, <laughs> socallglobal.org, join us in the Rewind, Walking the Talk. We started that at 11 o'clock Eastern time, and you can get the link to come into the Zoom room and meet community from around the world and um, talk about the talk or whatever else is going on in your week, maybe how you put the lesson from last week into practice or what's just what's going on. Just meet some of our friends in the Zoom room until we can actually get in a physical space again. May that be soon. Uh, it's been our privilege to launch into Women's Week with a fantastic film called Without a Whisper from Constitzioni Fox. And it is a 20 minute long film. It's very short, but powerful. And the link is up. It started Friday. It's up all day again today. If you go to our website, uh, there's the information right there, So Call Global or So Call Cinema. Uh, org slash evolve and register for the link is free. Uh, you may donate if you'd like. We appreciate donations there to keep the so Call cinema once a month. We're going to be doing this and um, fantastic story about the women's movement and how women gained rights in the United States of America by learning from 
the females in the in the Indian tribes that were here and had a more balanced system of of politics, shall we say. It was men and women came together to make decisions. Kind of like we're doing now, but it, imagine that. So um, what a fantastic film. And then Monday night, you can join us in a Zoom room, Monday evening at 6.30 Eastern time to discuss that film, to discuss the film without a whisper. And um, we invite all are welcome, but you'll have to register to get the link to come into the room. And all that is on the information pages on socallglobal.org. Uh, today, the food drive, let's see, this is the last week to sign up for Living Beautifully with Uncertainty and Change, the class that starts uh, Tuesday and Wednesday this week with Reverend David Leonard. Uh, more information on the website. And let's see, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I always do. I write them all down. Well, um, Let's see, I think that's it for now. There's a, a, a mandala workshop coming up at the end of the month, March 27th. There'll be more information about that in the newsletter. Please like and share us with your friends on Facebook, the Soul Call Global page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're gonna be having some special events coming up for subscribers. And share the newsletter. Uh, the newsletter is a fun way to introduce friends to the work of Soul Call Global. Uh, environmental things we're doing, helping to feed families. There's so much information and act activities that we're going to be engaged in throughout the course of the year. So we thank you for becoming part of our conscious global community and um, kind of getting active with uh, making the changes we would most like to see in the world of love. So thank you for joining us again this morning. And wherever you are, please always remember you are loved. Peace and blessings. One family, one people, one planet, one land.